Yo, what's going on, Kicks Army? Today I'll be showing you guys how to draw the Nike Air Force One step by step. And then after the drawing of the shoe is done, and once I finish going through inking everything up, I'll be going through some drawing tips and trips to help you better improve your artwork. Now, if you guys enjoy these daily sneaky drawing videos, and especially if you enjoy these how to draw videos, I have a full playlist of over 60 how to draw videos on this channel. I'll be sure to include it at the end, but make sure that if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button and bounce past that bell to get post notifications. And don't forget that all the stencils in my videos are available on my website kickstart.com. Kickstart.com is your number one source for free sneaker stencils with having over 230 stencils available right now and the best part about it is that if you want to see a new stencil added to the website that's not already available you can send your request to the contact tab at the top of the page. With that being said let's get it! Now before we draw out the rest of the shoe, we have to make sure we have our guidelines set up so that way the shoe looks proportionally correct. To do that, we're going to start off by drawing two squares right next to each other. Next, we're going to divide those two squares into top and bottom halves. Next, we're going to add two vertical lines, one on the bottom right hand quadrant and the second one on the initial left box. Finally, we're going to add one more horizontal line dividing the two bottom quadrants into halves and this will give us all the guidelines we need to draw out the rest of the sneaker. With most of my drawings, I like to start off by drawing the silhouette. I feel like once the silhouette is done, I feel like the rest of the drawing is much easier to complete. Now we're going to go ahead and start working on the outsole. For this part, you want to use that last horizontal line as your guide. We're going to add another line that follows out the bottom of the outsole. Next, we're going to start working on the Nike swoosh. For this, you really want to keep an eye on that middle crosshair that we have. That's really going to help out with the positioning of the swoosh. You're going to notice that I kind of go over the swoosh a few times because it looks kind of weird at first. You guys can alter it as you need to because we're still in the drawing stage so nothing is permanent. Then I'm going to start working on adding in some of those laces. Finally, I'm going to add some minor details on the upper that are going to separate the sections. And then once that's all done, you guys are pretty much done. The shoe is complete. Now, especially with this drawing, as opposed to some of the other drawings I've done, I noticed that the sketching stage is pretty rough. I want to make this very clear for you guys. When it comes to the sketching stage, you guys can go over each line as many times as you want until you feel that it's right. Because we're sketching, we are not beholden to any lines. We're not being forced to make any adjustments. We're not being forced to commit to these lines just yet. We can make these adjustments. We can make these modifications as we need, especially on the Nike swoosh. You see that I have a whole bunch of different lines going all over the place. And that's perfectly fine because it's not until I go through with the micron marker that I use when I ink everything that I have to commit to those lines. An ideal scenario, what I would do is I would erase some of those extra lines that I do need. I would clean everything up so that way it's easier for me to outline. But because I already know what the lines are going to look like when I outline it, because I'm confident in my skills to get those clean lines, I'm not too worried about cleaning up the messy lines that I have. If that makes it easier for you to perceive then by all means, go ahead and do it. If it makes it a lot easier knowing that you have very thin lines that are cleaned up, even if you did a lot of erasing, then do whatever works for you. Because at the end of the day, this is your drawing, so you have to use your abilities to the best that you can. The way I view most of my drawings is that once I have that rough outline down on the piece of paper, I know that I'm more than confident enough to go with the micron marker to go and finish those lines, make them smooth as they need to be, and then after all the black lines are done, after all the outlining is complete, then I'll go through and I'll erase all the extra pencil marks that I don't need. And as I've stated in previous videos, I use micron markers because I like the varying widths that they come available in. For a lot of the main outlining stuff that I'll do, I use the 0.45 millimeter for that that kind of line work and then when I have to do really fine details such as stitching or perforations or anything like that where it's very fine I use a 0.20 millimeter the micron marker is about a few bucks a piece I think it's like maybe three bucks a piece depending if you can get them with the coupon then by all means do that that's what I use I always use coupons whenever I go to Michaels and stuff um, but before I was using the micron markers I was using sharpies ultra fine sharpies to be exact because the traditional Sharpie markers are very thick and whenever we're dealing with outlining, you don't want to use a marker that thick unless your drawing is extremely big where it makes sense to use something like that. But if we're talking about a regular sheet of paper, I highly recommend you guys use ultra fine Sharpies. Even when it comes to the line work, I personally feel like for the most part, whenever I do these how to draw videos, my line work is just going to be a little rougher than I would like it to. And there's a main reason for that. The main reason is that when I'm recording these videos, I don't want my head to be in the way of the recording. I want to keep my head my body outside of the recording so that way you guys don't see my scalpel for half the video Because of that what it means is that to some degree my head has to be off to the side slanted from the where the drawing is And normally when I do my drawings, I like to be like right up in it I like to have my body over the drawing so I can see it from a top-down view 
because when I'm doing these videos, I don't have that luxury. Now, if I wanna take a long time to be very smooth, very precise with these outlines, then that's fine. I can do that and the outline will be much better, but at the end of the day, you have to ask yourself, whenever art that you're doing, is it worth it to spend X amount of time, whatever that time is, to go ahead and get the result if the result's not gonna be that noticeable? Because I could have spent another, you know, 15, maybe 20 minutes really taking my time on the outlining, but it really wouldn't have made that much of a difference anyway, so it's not worth it on my part. Also, this video is being uploaded pretty late anyway, so I didn't want to spend that extra time. I had a really, really busy day today. Like, this is one of those days where I definitely didn't want to upload a video because of all the stuff that I had to do and because of how tired I am. I am going back to school this week. I had a week off between the two quarters. But I knew I'm like, okay, if I don't upload a video today and I go to bed, I'm going to feel so guilty because I definitely had the time to fit this in. Even though this video is going to be uploaded like an hour, maybe an hour and a half later than usual, I would still rather do that than miss an upload altogether. As I mentioned, I am going back into school this week and that's not going to change anything for my schedule. I was uploading daily videos pretty much all of last quarter. And funny thing, as of today, it will have been two months since I started doing daily videos again. That's pretty crazy because if you guys remember, it was the end of last year. So let's say December, all of December of last year and then all of January and then most of February I was doing daily videos. So at the best that I was doing it, I was doing up to three months straight of daily videos. And we're already at two months of daily videos and I pretty much have this process down packed. I don't see myself really missing a day unless something really happens in my schedule. But I've gotten to the point where it's pretty easy to understand with what I'm doing with my schedule. I can plan things better. Obviously today is kind of an exception where I'm up running really late, but I still had the time to go ahead and do this. As I mentioned in a previous video, when it comes to uploading a video as well as uploading the stencils to the website, the two stencils that I do on my website, and if you guys don't know what stencils I upload, besides looking at that first page, you guys can always follow me on Instagram at SC352. But the video and the stencils being added to the website is usually a good four and a half hours a day. And guys, that's every day. That's not every two days, every three days. That's every single day on top of me going to school and going to work and doing whatever else that is I'm doing. And as I mentioned, my goal for the end of the year is to upload two stencils a day so that way I can reach my goal of like 400-ish stencils. And then my ultimate milestone for the channel, not my goal, but my milestone for the channel is to have over a thousand stencils added to the website, which can be done if I continue at the pace that I'm going at by the end of next year. Now the thing is, if I'm gonna upload two stencils every day, I'm also most likely gonna be able to upload every single day because for the most part, my schedule is going to be pretty consistent all throughout the rest of I guess up until June um, at the end of June is when I graduate and I'll have my career but I don't really see having a career changing up too much because the time that I'd be spending working at one job would replace the time that I spent going to school and working at my job now so that much wouldn't really change. Now, in terms of going daily, how long do I want to go daily for? Well, honestly, I want to go daily until the end of next year. And that at the very moment is my goal. It could be longer than that, but hopefully by that point, I won't have to do daily anymore. At least not with these videos, because these videos do take a long time to produce. Unless I'm able to find a way where Kickstart is my main source of income and I'm not having to rely on a job. But guys, when I go into the career field of graphic design, I want to at least be at that job for two years so that way I obtain all that knowledge, find all my skills, because it's way different being a student that's doing graphic design and actually being a graphic designer. You just get so much better, so much faster. You're actually put into these situations where you're dealing with real clients. Um, not to say that we don't do that now, but like, it's obviously a way different level. So my skills are gonna be so much better at the end of those two years. And the reason why I say two years is because it's gonna take about two years to pay off my tuition that's gonna be left over. And once I have my tuition all paid off, then I'm gonna have the financial freedom to pretty much do whatever I want. And hopefully during that duration of me doing the two years that I have to do at whatever job that I have, I will have built up the channel to the point where it's gonna be providing a lot of extra income to the point where I can just do this and focus on the stuff that I wanna do 
and not have to work for somebody else. That's my main goal, at least for like the short term. When I say short term, I mean like my five year goal. Okay, obviously there's like other goals that I have, but for the short term, you know, five, maybe three to five year goal, that's what I'm looking to do. Normally I would talk about the preseason games, but really not too much crazy happens today. We're still in the heart of preseason, so nothing really interesting is expected to happen. We did finally get to see the Lakers play. We finally got to see LeBron James play in the Lakers uniform and he played all of like under 20 minutes so it really wasn't anything too serious. Lakers lost by like 17 points so they honestly have a long long way to go if they want to be a genuine title contender and I feel like they're going to get to that point because again this is just like their first game of the preseason so nothing too crazy expected to happen and they do have LeBron James. He is playing limited minutes in the preseason because he doesn't need to play a lot. He's you know kind of LeBron James. He's good on that department but as I've said and I want to stay with this i don't want to switch my mind i believe they can win 50 plus wins and that they will make it to the second round of the western conference playoffs that's my prediction for the lakers let me know down in the comment section below what you think the lakers are going to achieve this season but that's going to do it for today's video if you guys enjoy these daily sneaker drawing videos make sure you leave a like and if you're new to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button and bounce past that button to get post motivations don't forget to visit kickstart.com for all your sneaker sensor needs and guys i have over 280 videos on the channel over 60 of which are how to drive videos so guys make sure you check that out with that being said you guys already know that i'm uploading daily sneaker drawing videos i will see you guys tomorrow yee